We have seen in the last example that if in space there are two lines of actions of stresses, how to find out the resultant stress? We are going to see now a second process which is interesting. Imagine this is one line of action of stress and it is acting in down plunge direction. There is another line of action of stress given by the black pen that also is giving a down plunge direction of stress. How to find out the resultant stress? In this case, Consider this is the given sigma 1, so it has a magnitude, plunge and trend. I give some value 7.2 giga Pascal and it has a plunge of theta 1 and a trend of Phi 1. Now, in the space there is also another stress sigma 2 having let us give some value or sigma 1 itself can be taken as a value or sigma 2 here has let us say 5.5 GPA. I can take this value and proceed and also I can take sigma 2 as a magnitude and also we can proceed. Plunge is theta 2 and the trend is equal to phi 2. Now, in this process we are going to resolve if I write here what is my step is to resolve sigma 1 and sigma 2 into horizontal and vertical components. Next what do we do? The two vertical components of sigma 1 and sigma 2 will be added up to get the resultant vertical component and the two horizontal components of sigma 1 and sigma 2 will be added up to get the resultant horizontal component. Then from one resultant vertical component and one resultant horizontal component we find the grand resultant sigma r. We will see that. What we need? We need the magnitude. we need the plunge and we need the trend value. These two together is known as the as we know attitude of the line of action of sigma r. Now, I take this one first and I am starting say this is the sigma 1 given I can draw a vertical component and I can draw a horizontal component. This is sigma 1 n and this is sigma 1 s. n subscript indicates it is a normal component, s subscript indicates it is a shear component on the horizontal plane. So, 1 n indicates that it is a normal component of the sigma 1 stress, sigma 1 s indicates that it is a shear component on horizontal plane coming from the sigma 1 stress. Now, we note that it has a plunge of theta 1 degree. So, where is theta 1 here? This is the theta 1 angle. So, from here I can say that sigma 1 n equal to sigma 1 into sin theta 1 and sigma 1 s equal to sigma 1 multiplied by cos theta 1. We have seen similar deduction in one of our previous examples. Now, we will do the same thing for the sigma 2 stress. So, I draw it here and this is the normal component sigma 2 n, this is the shear component sigma 2 s. It has a plunge of theta 2 where is theta 2 degree? It is over here. So, I can write just like this, I can write here 
सिग्मा टू एन इक्वल टू सिग्मा टू साइन थीटा टू एंड सिग्मा टू एस इक्वल टू सिग्मा टू कॉस थीटा टू सो दीज इक्वेशंस कैन आल्सो बी रिटन इन ए मोर कॉम्पैक्ट फॉर्म व्हाट इज दैट आई कैन राइट सिग्मा आई एन इज इक्वल टू सिग्मा आई इंटू साइन थीटा आई एंड सिग्मा आई एस इज इक्वल टू सिग्मा आई इंटू कॉस थीटा आई एंड हियर देर आर टू पॉसिबल वैल्यूज आई इक्वल टू वन एंड आई इक्वल टू टू सो वंस वी पुट दिज वैल्यूज वी गो बैक टू दीज इक्वेशंस नाउ इंटरेस्टिंगली इफ नॉट जस्ट टू given stresses sigma 1 sigma 2 were given and i am trying to find out the resultant if there are other stress directions given sigma 3 sigma 4 etc then this resolution will work perfect and i have to write i equal to 1, 2, 3, 4 for so n number of stresses which is given similar deduction and similar representation can be made next what to do as i said i am now going to add up the vertical components what are the vertical components sigma 1 n is the vertical component of sigma 1 and here sigma 2 n is the vertical component of sigma 2 so i can write sigma normal that is acting is equal to sigma 1 n plus sigma 2 n why i am adding up i am adding up because sigma 1 n acts vertically down and sigma 2 n also acts vertically down since they are in the same direction so this in this case the two stresses can be added up and that has been done there are situations when they will not be added up they will be subtracted which i will show you later and what about now sigma 1s and 2s these are the shear components so these two can be drawn in this way on a horizontal plane on a horizontal plane i am drawing the north south east west directions north is 0 degree east is 90 degree south is 180 degree west is 270 degree and again north is 360 degree and here i have to draw sigma 1s and sigma 2s now note that sigma 1 has a trend and that trend is same as that of sigma 1s this has to be understood imagine this is your sigma 1s so i made a vertical component and a horizontal component look at this pen this pen has a downside in that direction and that is the trend of this pen now if i make a horizontal component of this stress this blue pen is also having the same trend so the sigma 1s trend and sigma 1s trends they will be the same what was the trend given the trend for sigma 1 is phi 1 so from north if i draw an angle phi 1 and i draw an arrow like this this is my sigma 1s component drawn on a horizontal plane now similarly i can draw the sigma 2s component also in case of sigma 2 the trend is phi 2 so assume phi 2 is more than phi 1 just as an example i am taking after seeing the problem you can also work with suppose phi 2 is less than phi 1 then also you can solve and suppose phi 2 is equal to phi 1 then also you can be able to solve so phi 2 is the trend so the phi 2 i can draw in this way and i can say this angle is phi 2 and this is a sigma 2s component so sigma 1s and 2s have been drawn on a horizontal plane while we came up to this you understand that the process is going to take more time than the stereo net problem nevertheless it is interesting so we must cover now once i reach this situation this goes back to one of my previous lectures where i have shown already on a horizontal plane if there are two lines of actions of stresses we can find out the resultant so you can watch that video 
and then following that process for these two components we can find the resultant which I can call as sigma s. So, what is sigma s? Sigma s is the resultant shear stress acting on the horizontal surface. So, what have we got finally? We have got already sigma n by the process I told you and we have also got now sigma s. The resultant normal stress is obtained and the resultant shear stress is obtained. Now, we have to vectorially add up to find out the resultant stress. How to do that? So, from the sigma n and sigma s, how will we find out the resultant? So, this is the resultant sigma normal and this is the open side of the pen. So, this way the stress is acting and there is a shear stress also acting along some direction. like this. This is the normal stress resultant and say this is the shear stress resultant. So, the resultant grand resultant of the normal stress and the shear stress will be this grand resultant vector and you can see this constitutes a right angle triangle where this is sigma n magnitude, this is sigma s magnitude. So, my drawing will look like this. This is sigma n, this is sigma s and this is the sigma grand resultant. So, the plunge of the grand resultant will be given by tan inverse sigma n by sigma s. This is the plunge. What is the magnitude? The magnitude is given by this is the magnitude. So, we have got the magnitude, we have got the plunge, still one thing is left that is the trend of the resultant stress as a vector. So, what we need now is we need the how to find out that? Let us go back to our three dimensional construction. This is the normal stress acting downward, this is the shear stress in some direction and we already know the trend of this line for which you have to look at my previous videos. This is the resultant and this is the trend. This is the trend of this sigma s. Note that in this diagram, this grand resultant, okay, hold like this, the grand resultants trend is in that direction which is same as its horizontal projection sigma s. So, the trend that is obtained from here will be equal to the trend of the grand resultant sigma r. So, in this way the three can be solved. I repeat we started with a situation when both the stresses were acting in downward direction. The given stresses sigma 1 and sigma 2 were acting in downward direction. What will happen if one of them is acting downward and another is acting upward just like this. This stress is acting downward, this stress is acting upward. In what way the deductions will vary I am going to tell you now. So, now we are dealing with a case where one of the stresses is acting in down plunge direction, another given stress is acting in up plunge direction. How do we find out the resultant stress? So, for the first one, this is given sigma 1 and I will find out the normal stress and the shear stress. Theta 1 is the plunge of the sigma 1 line of action of stress. So, sigma 1 s is given by sigma 1 into cos theta and sigma 1 n is given by sigma 1 into sin theta. This is sigma 1 n, this is sigma 1 s. Now, for the other one, it is in the up plunge direction sigma 2. Here also we resolve it by the way similar to the 
normal stress and shear stress but do you observe a change that in case of sigma 1 when the stress was acting in down plunge direction the resultant normal stress went vertically down whereas here for sigma 2 when it is going in up plunge direction then the vertical component of stress goes towards upward direction why it is so let us recollect the simple thing let us say it is a triangle ABC I can write the AC vector is equal to the AB vector plus BC vector to tell this in a more simple language you want to reach from A to C how will you reach one is that you can straight away go A to C alternately you can go from A to B so is this arrow A to B and then from B to C is this arrow now here the AC vector is basically our sigma 2 and this A to B is going to be our sigma 2 S the shear stress and plus this is sigma 2 N the normal stress sigma 2 N they are all the vectors. So, what should I write for sigma 2 N I have to write sigma 2 n is equal to this angle I will make a change here we did with phi 1 so I call it phi 1 phi 1 and here it is phi 2 sigma 2 n is equal to sigma 2 sin phi 2 and sigma 2 s is equal to sigma 2 cos phi 2. Now, I repeat sigma 1 n goes vertically down sigma 2 sigma 2 n moves vertically up. So, the resultant normal stress will be given by sigma 1 n and sigma 2 n this symbol means the bigger one minus the smaller one. For example, Okay. So, here if sigma 1 is n is bigger than sigma 2 n I am explaining for the geology students some of them are not in touch with mathematics therefore, the simple things also I am telling this means if sigma 1 n is more than sigma 2 n in that case sigma n equal to sigma 1 n minus sigma 2 n and if sigma 1 n is less than sigma 2 n then sigma n equal to sigma 2 n minus sigma 1 n this is the meaning of this symbol and you can also understand for sigma 1 n equal to sigma 2 n sigma n equal to 0. So, in this way we finally find out the sigma n therefore, when a problem is given to you be very careful whether the stress is acting down plunge or up plunge direction depending on that there will be subtle changes in solution of the problem. Now, this sigma n being done we are going to pick up sigma 1 s and sigma 2 s. We will draw north south east west direction on a supposedly horizontal green board. Now, the sigma 1 s will be drawn say the angle is theta 1 that means theta 1 is the trend of sigma 1 s theta 1 is also the trend of sigma 1. Now, I will draw sigma 2 s I will draw this sigma 2 s now here I have to be alert sigma 2 acts in an up plunge direction. So, if I resolve this sigma 2 into a horizontal stress and a vertical stress component you see that the horizontal stress is acting in this direction because you see that is the upside. So, if I resolve this stress into a horizontal component this is the component in that direction not in this direction. So, therefore, 
what to do i have to draw theta 2 angle what is theta 2 theta 2 is the trend of sigma 2 theta 2 is the but in this case the stress is the sigma 2 s is not acting in this direction rather in that direction. So, this is our sigma 2 s. So, now what we have got? We have got the two components of stresses being drawn. This is one sigma 1 s and this is the sigma 2 s. So, from here I have to find out the resultant stress which is the sigma s resultant shear stress. Once the resultant shear stress is obtained and we have already obtained the normal stress. Now, following the argument that I made earlier, we can find out the plunge and trend of the resultant grand resultant stress sigma r. Now, let us have a look at the situation when both the stresses in 3D are acting in up plunge direction. This is acting in that direction, this is acting in that direction. How will we solve? In that case, this is our drawing sigma 1 stress and this is another stress given which is sigma 2. In this case, we can resolve the applied the given stress sigma 1 into a normal stress and a shear stress component and the arrows will go like this. Why it is so? Because in the triangle ABC where this angle is right angle, we can see that AC equal to sorry AB equal to AC plus CB. It is like saying I want to go from A to B instead of that I go from A to C and then C to B that is what I have written. So, here sigma 1 is equal to sigma 1 n plus sigma 1 s and so also here we can write sigma 2 equal to sigma 2 n plus sigma 2 s. This is the sigma 2 s component and this is the sigma 2 n component. So, we see that in this case both the vertical stresses sigma 1 n and sigma 2 n are towards the skyward direction. Since they are in the same direction I should add up the to find out the resultant normal stress. I can write and also magnitude wide this would be the thing. So, if this is 3 Pascal, this is 2 Pascal, I can simply add up 3 plus 2 equal to 5 Pascal because they are acting in the same direction. Now, how to deal with the sigma 1 s and the sigma 2 s component? Note that the sigma 1 line of action has a trend in this direction. This line has a downside in this direction. So, if I take it up, make it horizontal, this is the direction that is the trend of the sigma 1. And once I find out the AC line as sigma 1 s, then, but the line of action of stress as per stress resolution, here is the arrow, it is just 180 degree opposite. So, also here, let me explain it over there once again. For the sigma 2 line of action of stress, sigma 2 has a trend in that geographic direction. Whereas, sigma 2 s has a trend because it has a, it is a directed line is 180 degree opposite to that. So, therefore, if sigma 1 has a trend of theta 1 and sigma 2 has a trend of theta 2, then sigma 1 s has 180 degree plus theta 1 trend same thing I will comment here that from here I am saying sigma 2 s has 
180 degree plus theta 2 degree trend. Once I have got the two trends, I will be able to draw on the or visualize on a horizontal plane. Say this green board is a horizontal plane. This is the north geographic direction, this is the south, this is the east and this is the west geographic direction. So, 180 degree plus theta 1 and 180 degree plus theta 2 can be plotted on it. Depending on the data on theta 1 and theta 2, they can be two lines like this, where this angle is 180 degree plus theta 1 and this angle is 180 degree plus theta 2. So, what did I draw? I have basically drawn two lines. This line is indicating sigma 1 s line of action on horizontal plane and this is my sigma 2 s. Now, in such a case I have already discussed when on a horizontal plane we find the two stress components how to find out the resultant. So, one can find out from here the resultant shear stress sigma s. Once the resultant sigma s is obtained and we have already obtained the resultant normal stress, I can find out the grand resultant sigma r. Now, I am writing as a vector addition sigma n plus sigma s which I have described in the very first problem today when both the stresses are acting in down plunge direction. So, I would expect that you write down these things properly and then get into the problem set, take your time and try to solve them.